Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name's Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 159, dude. Listen, we just got in. I barely had time to change. We've been in Aruba for the last 36 hours. And I know what you're immediately thinking, like, what the fuck? Why was he only... Why, like it wasn't a vacation? Why were you in Aruba for only 36 hours? I had a friend who needed a favor. When you get to the statue like me, where you take helicopter rides to your podcast studios on different ends of the country every week, and then go back to be with your family at night, you get asked to do favors. So my friend didn't have time. He was busy with something else, okay? And so he asked me, he said, hey, can you take my private jet to Aruba, leave it there, and I'll pay your first class ticket back, yada, yada. It'll be 36 hours, no big deal. I didn't have anything going on. I can work remotely on the plane. Did he? I mean, my friend needed this favor, okay? And so I took the plane to Aruba, and we uh, landed it there, and then we spent the night and then came back. And the favor was done. You know what I mean? J- Lou Bugs jet lagged. We just got off the plane. I'm in my Aruba tie. I had to dress the part. We weren't trying to be suspicious. You know what I mean? For particular reasons, did he, my friend didn't want me to uh didn't want me to stand out. You know what I mean? He didn't want to make a big deal of me being there with this particular plane. So for whatever future endeavors he might have plans and when we took the plane to Aruba it just made sense to get back home we came to LAX so of course it just I have the podcast in New York open for another week so I was like let me just film in the New York City studio this week next week we'll be back in Chicago and it's just it's the most insane uh it's been the most busy we've been so busy these last few weeks We moved from New York back to Chicago for the winter. Then my friend needed the favor to Aruba. Now I'm in New York again. I got to go back to Mechanicsburg and then Chicago next week for the podcast. I mean, I'm everywhere all at once. It's a mystery. But listen, it's not looking good for Sean Diddy Combs, okay? Uh, (laughs) The news is out, okay? And I get it. Like most of us, since that FBI raid that happened months and months ago, we were like, okay, great. What's it? They took all the stuff. They took all of his things. And then that was it. They asked a few questions. And now seemingly every other TMZ article is Diddy taking a bike ride. Diddy's playing Frisbee in the park. Diddy's going for a swim in his pool. Diddy just got back from the award show. Diddy was just in Canada. Like, they're all this Diddy news, and it has nothing to do with the fact that he was throwing freak parties in his mansions all over the country. And so uh, the verdict and the evidence was finally sifted through and brought down, and we now uh, have uh, Sean Diddy Combs in custody. What are we doing? And so it's the news of the week, you know what I mean? Sean Diddy Combs was held without bail Tuesday after being charged with racketeering conspiracy for allegedly running an empire that he engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, and or kidnapping, arson, and other crimes. Okay, we all saw the video. We all saw what he did to the girl. We all saw him drag her through the root. Like, it just, it's not... We knew, like, this isn't, this is definitely nowhere near the end. This is only the beginning. Like, there will be names. This is like, I don't want to pin him as an Epstein-level type of situation, but this is like a kind of close second. You're going to hear a lot of names you know in the news, and if P. Diddy's name is anywhere in that article, it's probably not good for that celebrity friend that you may or may not know or look up to or love. So, and we're going to get to a couple names in this episode. You know what I mean? We can't get through it without mentioning a few key players. So he was also charged with sex trafficking by force and transportation to engage in prostitution. Combs has pled not guilty. Of course. What are we doing? The music mogul was arrested on late Monday in Manhattan, roughly six months after federal authorities conducted a sex trafficking investigation uh, raided his luxurious home in Los Angeles and Miami simultaneously. We all remember that day. 
Uh, but he wasn't arrested that day for some unknown reason. That was just their evidence collection day, I suppose. The incident detailing the charges was unsealed Tuesday morning. According to the indictment, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct, a.k.a. he made him do stuff, he made him uh, do things that they didn't want to do, uh, I'll let your imagination run wild, but we have it on good authority that he, this man, he's got a 40 foot bed in the backyard. What are we doing? So at any given time we can fit 40 to 50 people in one bed. I mean, it's just the amount, ima- let your imagination, like I'm sure he has for the last decade run wild. Okay. So it's, it's kind of, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. And it's disgusting and it's weird. And this is what happens when you have too much money. Okay. People think the bill, like people think Elon and Jeff Bezos with their big boats and everything. People think that looks sexy. You know what's sexy? This shirt. You know what's not sexy? A billion dollars, because this is what fucking happens. What are we doing? You get bored. You can't buy anything anymore. What are you going to buy? You already have a new iPhone on the way. You already have everything you want. You can order anything at any given time that gets boring. So the next logistical thing you start buying and paying for is people and services by them. And so whether it's your male companions in the music industry, your female companions, friends, family, maybe people who aren't of age, I don't know. Allegedly, it's just a sticky situation (laughs) where uh, a lot of people, I don't think, wish you're going to start hearing this term a lot. Uh, I was at the party and left early. Hey, how many people have you heard say it? What are we doing? How many people? Go ahead, put in the comments below. How many celebrities on your TikTok, on your Twitter feeds, on your Facebook feeds, on the reels, how many of your friends like Damon Wayans has gone on interviews and on record already saying that, yeah, I was at the Diddy party, but I must have left early because I didn't see any of that shit. What are we doing? Is going to be the excuse. Yeah, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet, but like we were just going to dig up dinosaur bones in Montana because that's what we do as a family on the weekend. What are we doing? Like, Jeffrey wasn't there. Ghislaine was a friend of a friend of a friend. They set the whole thing up. We just used the jet. We're innocent. We swear to God, we've never seen anything at Diddy's parties, dude. And so, how many people? You know what I'm saying? It's it's a bit strange. And so, you're going to start hearing that, and you're going to start thinking, and you're going to start hearing things... From the past, we'll kind of bring that. Hey, hey, Whoa, hey, dude! Hey, I didn't hit that on purpose, but it's appropriate. It scared me a little bit. I thought someone was coming into the. I thought P Diddy was coming into the studio what are we to get doing? me. <laughs> oh, that was a great moment. Clip that shit. Uh, Combs 54 relied on employees, resources, and influence of his multifaceted businesses empire to create a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to gauge in amongst other set, uh, other crimes, sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The indictment said, did he allegedly controlled women by paying them with drugs, withholding financial support and resorting to violence, uh, allegations that my, uh, that mirror, uh, oh, sorry, not minor, uh, maybe, uh, allegations that mirror 11 civil complaints filed against him since 2023. Okay. And so the biggest news out of this whole thing is that when they went to the, the house or the hotel room, wherever they picked him up or wherever they had a warrant to search for, uh, it was pretty uh, apparent to the people on the scene and, of course, the news uh, anchors who followed suit after that this was, in fact, their guy. Uh, because uh, you don't uh, get arrested with over a 1,000 bottles of baby oil 
just on the shelves of your house with no one going, huh, what are these, what are these over here for? You know what I mean? What are, what are all these, Sean, 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 look at me. Hey, these right here, what are these for? You just like the cut. Is it an art piece? It's an art piece. It's an art piece. What are we doing? You sick motherfucker. You sick people. You think, what do you think Sean Diddy Combs is using a thousand bottles of baby oil for, huh? It's an art installation. He had some hipster college kid from some small town community college come in and he said, I want it to be colorful. I want it to be modern. It's Johnson and Johnson. He did it in 2020 when the Johnson and Johnson COVID shot was out. Sean Diddy Combs got the Johnson and Johnson COVID shot. What are we doing? And so to incorporate that into the art installation, it was a thousand bottles of baby oil. He doesn't actually use them for anything, folks. Come on. What do you think he uses? And then the three, listen, the three AR-15s, AK-47s, whatever weapons they found, fine. Listen, what what person in America, white, black, Haitian, hey, whoever you are in America, most people, not this house because we don't believe in it, uh, but uh, most people, you're going to find a gun in their house. That's fine. But the thousand bottles of lube is what I need you all to understand. Is that for, here's the issue, for your next chapter of your life from here on out for the from starting right now for the rest of your life here's a new life rule i need you to all live by if you walk into any establishment and you see more than one bottle of baby oil on a shelf or however it's displayed anywhere leave get the fuck out run as quick as you can grab your belongings and go home what are we doing and don't look back, dude. Don't return. Don't say anything to anyone. If you see two, three, four, that, and if there's that many, that means there's plenty more to come. If you see more than one bottle of baby oil, if you see more than one full bottle of lube at any establishment, a house party, a pampered chef get together, one of the, now obviously, if you're doing one of those like, you know, female toy parties that the girls did like a few years ago in their early 20s because they thought it was sexy selling the dildos to all their friends in the circle in the living room, a few of them would buy it, but you just did it for the 30% off discount because you wanted a toy of your own. It's fine. That's the only situation where more than one bottle of lube is acceptable. What are we doing? But other than that, leave. Get out. If you go to a wedding, if you go to an arcade, if you go to a par a birthday party at someone's house, you go to a backyard barbecue, and you go into the bathroom, even if it's a bathroom cabinet, you're just looking for a towel to wash your hands, and you open it up, even if it's not publicly displayed, you accidentally stumble upon a private collection of more than one full bottle of baby oil. Run for your fucking life! What are we doing? Get out, because that situation never ends good, okay? It never ends good. We call these events the freak-offs, folks. We're calling them, this isn't what we made up. This isn't what we made up. This is what the person on the TV says. This is what's in the documents. It's in the legal documents as, quote, freak-offs. Sean Diddy Combs forced women into sick, and this is the article, dude. I'm not... This is, this is real life. This is where we're at. This is where you go when you get a billion dollars in your pocket. Sean Diddy Combs forced women into sick freak-off sex sections with male prostitutes that were often recorded while the music producer masturbated. A bombshell indictment alleged Tuesday. The music mogul, 54, who has been hit with federal sex trafficking and racketeering charges, allegedly got his female victims into the days-long sexual performances as part of his alleged pattern of abuse dating back to more than a decade, Manhattan federal prosecutor said. What are we doing? Freak-offs were elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, 
masturbated during and often electronically recorded the newly unreleased court papers alleged. And so basically, he just came up with a new term. He's a porn director. What are we doing? He is a disgusting porn producer. He would have people come over to his house and he would produce porn for adults. Or Well, it wasn't for adults, it was for himself. But the issue was he was just in the background fapping one while they were supposed to be filming the porn. And I think the only other change and issue was the people in the porns didn't actually know they were being recorded or signed up for or had consent to or actually wanted to be in or actually wanted to not be there at all in the porns. It was kind of a forced thing. So I guess it really what he really wasn't that, and he's just kind of, he's a sick and twisted individual criminal. What are we doing? And so... I just, the freak offs, dude. First of all, I was invited, I, I was invited to a 4th of July party. No one ever said anything to me about a freak off, okay? And according to my legal team, I just met with my lawyer last night for a few hours. We talked about all this and he has advised me to say that yes, as in fact I was myself, you will find my name, Levi, on the guest list of one of the 4th of July P. Diddy parties in 2022 or 2023, we're not sure which year it was, uh, but I did not attend. First of all, I couldn't make it. Second of all, I didn't want to go. What are we doing? Because a little birdie told me not to, and I trusted that instinct, and that's why I you might find my name, dude. I, I wasn't there, and I didn't see anything. What are we doing? And you know, I mean, listen, we just all know, listen, Cat Williams was right. Cat Williams was right. He was, he was the one who told us this from the beginning. He told us this from the beginning. Cat Williams said... This, and I mean, it's, we all remember this interview, but it's not like it goes without saying, um, he was, uh, the lie detector determined you were telling the truth. Big dick deviance is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. Okay, that's it. He what said it. What are we it. doing? All of the big dick deviants. Now, I thought that was a nickname that only Megs gave to me. But apparently I missed that part in the when originally watching this episode. I might have blacked out. But, uh, okay, but I'm going to denounce my title as the big dick deviant and just give it straight to P. Diddy. Uh, and so, I mean, just listen, it's just, it's, it, Hey, it, what are we talking about? We project cat Williams out here telling us, uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you did or whoever you is. That's it. What are we doing? It's done. It's game over. But the issue is the issue is that's where, that's just where it starts. That's just where it's, that's where you think. That's where you think it starts. But in reality, we've had Cat Williams telling us about these types of things many, 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 many years ago. And like most of us, like the rest of us, uh, we were all laughing along and we weren't too sure what exactly Cat was talking about. But now... Now it kind of, sort of, all kind of, sort of makes sense. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited than a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms and you fuck around and look in the wrong room and shit. <laughs> Nick, come here, come here. Is that two niggas kissing? Is one of them niggas Professor Opie? Now, you what know are what we I mean, doing? Dude, like, so 
this is something that has been going on for a while. And like, don't even listen. If we're already on the train of names, like shout out, shout out to Cat Williams for never going to the party and shout out to, uh, Man, don't even get me started on Usher and Justin Bieber. What are we doing? Like, Usher and Justin Bieber are like right-hand man soldiers number one and number two. And you can take that term I just said in any way you want. Uh, I didn't mean it to sound that way, but it kind of did. And it's fun. Here we are. We're here now. And it's pretty much it. And it's just like we know. Listen, I don't, I don't have the clip of Bieber pulled up. But I've got this dude, this clip, uh, this clip of Usher explaining his time with P. Diddy that's just out in the open, Howard Stern Show. Listen to this, 2016 we were here. Listen. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. Okay, we have a lot to unpack What here. are we doing? We have a lot to unpack in this video, so buckle up. It's, uh, we called it Fluffy's, Puffy's Flavor Camp. Is that what it is? That's what it was. I didn't go. I wasn't invited to that either. Puffy's Flavor Camp. Oh, red flag number one, 13 years old. Okay, Puffy's flavor cam, dude. And like, dude, this whole clip, this oh. whole clip, watch Usher's face, okay? He's uncomfortable. He doesn't want to talk about it. He, this is a topic that he thought that maybe wasn't going to get brought up. But uh, fortunately, it did. And this was even back in 26. I mean, Puffy's flavor Tom camp. Puffy comes for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over City. to something called... L.A. Reid's, lock him up! What are we doing? Aiden in a bed, and it's a serious thing. Puffy flavor camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> flavor some... Camp. Yeah, flavor camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to... In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. So, and this... How fu- and how disgusting is Howard Stern, by the way? Like, hey, dude. What are we doing? We just established he was 13 years old, and you're throwing out the fact that Puffy's house was just filled with naked chicks and orgies the entire time. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and Disgusting. orging like nonstop, Disgusting. right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and say that. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? He didn't say a woman came along. He's there for the lifestyle, the indulgence. He's confused because he's a 13 year old child. Within a house, I think, what, Puff was probably like 20, 20, 21 at the time. So even he was insanely young, dude. These This Hollywood situation where these children are out on their own, like even 21, I understand some would argue, but that's still, you're still kind of like an idiot. What are okay? we doing? Like, let's just be honest. At 21 years old, let alone 13, you don't even understand what's going on around you. And when she asks, like, hey, with, like women didn't try to come like put their titties in their face and he's like no I didn't say that it was it was dicks it was a lot of dicks but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at it was it was pretty wild it was, so nobody it was tried to you know some woman didn't come along I didn't say that okay I, no because it was men what are we doing I didn't but say you that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh-huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh-huh. Biggie sm- very curious things taking place that he didn't understand because up until this point, he assumed that uh, men and women do this privately in the private. Like, come on! What are we doing? Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim. Oh, no. Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jody and your C, were Mary okay? J. Blige, they didn't know nothing about this shit. Oh, <laughs> of course his parents didn't know. What are we doing? Like, 
this is what we're talking about, folks. When when we're in the '90s and even now, like this is why all the documentaries are coming out. Like the parents were on set of the Nickelodeon shows, and Dan Schneider still exists. What are we doing? It's a situation where like th- this has been going on now. Diddy's what fifty. And when he was what when he was 24, 20 years old, this was it's been going on for thirty years, and we're just on Howard Stern talking about it loosely, like it never had, like it's just a joke. It was funny. It was a fun, curious. I didn't understand it experience because I was thirteen years old. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim was there. Their names are all over the Diddy Docs. I mean, it's a shame. What are we doing? I can't. I don't know. I, I don't know where to stay. I mean, Jody your C, were Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, what kind, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a No, de- dude, let, listen. Listen to when Howard says, what a life, and then look at his face. Can you Ready? stay up till four oh, in the morning with them and party? Uncomfortable. I mean, I could. Yeah. I actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, what kind, and do you have money? Oh, What's true. going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. What a life. Yes. What a life. What are we doing? Does this look like the face of the man that had a great upcoming at 13 years old? His parents didn't give a shit where he was. He was new to the industry and the biggest superstar at the time, Puff Daddy, Sean Diddy Combs, was bringing him in under his arm and just giving him everything, all of the advice, all of the attention, all of the money, all the backings he needs to be a successful superstar. And we've heard this time and time again with the Harvey Weinsteins of the world. What are we doing? We've heard this time and time again with the Epsteins of the world. It's very interesting. This case will be, I mean, the face of a uh, poor Usher. I mean, it were, oh, ha. And then obviously we know, I think I'm pretty sure, I, I'm almost positive Bieber got the same treatment. So, you know, it just, it's a, it's a, it's a slippery Freaking slow. What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell know? no. See? <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Excuse me. We're just going to end it right there. The biggest fucking bombshell of the whole clip, of the whole episode, of the whole year should have been that right there. Your father, would you send your children to Puffy Camp, the camp you went to as a kid that that raised you and molded you and not necessarily groomed you, but molded you into who you were today? Would you send Damn. your kids? Yeah, I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What? 14 years Dude. old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell <laughs> no. What are we doing? Because he knows exactly what happens there, man. I mean, come on. It's a it's a closed case. They, D- D- uh, Diddy has no bail. It's crazy. There's it's a lot to unpack, and we're I think it's just. Meanwhile, you know. Meanwhile, we've. Got, <laughs> meanwhile, we've got. Meanwhile, meanwhile, just one more fucking. <laughs> meanwhile. Meanwhile, one more clip on Diddy. I have to do it. Meanwhile, we've got the Breakfast Club calling him out and him just dodging. Him just dodging it. Watch this. Ready? He dodges the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play. Play. Hey, yo, this is, yo I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you put my bag daddy, in? I like when you, oh, when you right scrambling here, right and scraping for no, 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 no. shit. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. When you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. That's it! What are we doing? <laughs> that line, that last line. Hey, man. Dot, dot, dot. 
That's exactly what is this court? This is court. This is Puff Daddy in court in a few months. They're gonna bring up all this evidence. They're gonna show him pictures of the lube on the wall. They're gonna show him the videos of him beating the shit out of women. They're gonna show him the illegal pornos he made. They're gonna show all the evidence. And then as soon as they ask him, you know, hey man, listen, here's the evidence. What do you uh, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> What? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy, <laughs> when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> what are we doing? Hey, man, listen, it's, it's, it all makes sense now. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. It all comes down to the nonsensical part about it. We're just seeing the beginning of this whole entire Thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the What Are We Doing podcast is brought to you by Dude Robe. Listen, Dude Robe is the only robe built for dudes. And ladies, listen, I'm not just referring to the men. I'm I'm talking to you too, dude. Okay. If you let you know me, I love using the word dude, and that's why we partnered up with Dude Robe. What are we okay? doing? It only makes sense. How many times do I say dude in episode? to the point where I needed to partner up with Dude Robe. When I was looking for a robe for myself, it was these big, floofy, expensive, stupid things from Boss Cobbs and Bonton. Because for whatever reason, the Boss Cobbs down the street, on any given weekend, the parking lot is packed. We're filling Boss Cobbs with our parents and their parents of people who are just buying shitty, and overweight and crappy, falling off, your dick hangs out, there's shit, they're just disgusting. Don't go to the department store to buy a rope. What are we doing? Ladies, I'm talking to you too. They're, that shit's for the birds. Don't get anything from there too. Listen to this. Dude Robe is changing the game, okay? If you go to dudrobe.com, you're going to find out everything you need to know. They're soft. They've got a hoodie material on the outside, a towel lining on the inside. So when you're fresh out the shower, you don't even need to fucking, you don't even need to towel. Throw on your dude robe, boom, hop into bed. You're done. You're good to go. What are we doing? It's comfortable. It has a hood. It has loose sleeves so you can move around. It has a strap that is attached to the waist so you never lose it. You can tie it off and your dick will never fall out. What are we doing? It's the dude robe. And what they have done for my listeners, when I tell you, listen, this is another reason we had to meet with the lawyers because we had to negotiate. They were only trying to give you guys 10%. They were only trying to give you 10%. But I said, listen, I'm on the phone. I'm with my lawyers right now. We need 20 for the Wad Pod listeners. We need 20. They wanted 10. They didn't get what it. What are we doing? When you use promo code WAD, that's W A W D at checkout. W A W D at checkout. When you go to dudrobe.com, get yourself a robe. They got t shirts. They got the lounge shorts. They got the slides. They got the sweatshirts now. They've got the whole attire. Swag out your closet for the holiday season. Get yourself one. Get your girlfriend one. Get your wife one. I knew a couple once. Listen to this crate. This is such a, I swear to God. And I, I clear, I told them, I told them this story. I brought in witnesses. This is 100% true. This is why they're letting me say it. I knew a couple. I knew a married couple. I DJed their wedding. They were on the brink of divorce. One of them let it slip on Snapchat. Like, Hey, things aren't going well. And I'm like, Hey man, what's up? Because like, you know, when you DJ someone's wedding, you spend time with them, you get to know their hat, their ins like you become friends with some of your couples. It's fine. It happens in the industry all the time. And so I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, things aren't going good. It's me and Jessica. It's our marriage. Like, we're probably, we're probably going to split up. And I'm like, hey, man. What are we doing? Don't do that. I'm like, listen, get her, try, do me a favor. Try this right now. You got a little bit of money. You got some money. You have your debit card. You know your credit card number. Perfect. Go to dudrobe.com. Okay, I know this sounds weird. D-U-D-E. Dude, D-U-D-E-R-O-B-E, robe, dude, robe, D-U-D-E-R-O-B-E.com, dude, robe.com. Get yourself one. You're probably going to need a large. Jessica's probably going to need a medium. Get her a medium. If that doesn't fit, give her your large and then return exchange. It'll be real easy. So get a medium and a large. Pick out two different colors. Get her, get, get, get yourself some slides. Get her a dude robe. Say, honey, surprise. I got, listen, I got us matching dude robes. 
and it's going to be date night. We're going to play, we're going to play Mario party. I got a bottle of vodka, dude robes, put it on babe. And listen, don't wear anything underneath your dude robe. And we're going to have a killer night. It's going to say, and it saved their marriage. What are we doing? My advice, they were on the brink of divorce. I told him to get a dude robe. And when he did, he used promo code WAD, W-A-W-D. So not only was his almost future ex-wife not pissed because he didn't spend a shit ton of money because he used promo code WAD at checked out and saved 20%. What are we doing? So when he used promo code W-A-W-D and saved 20%, and not only it double saved his marriage, dude. We are double saving people's marriages with not only this podcast, but dude rope. So please... Go to dudrobe.com, do some shopping, get your friends, yourself, your wife some gifts, save your relationship, and save your wallet too at checkout using promo code WAD, W-A-W-D, and you'll get 20% off the whole damn thing. You'll get 20% off. They wanted to give you 10. I said, no, they need 20. 20% off Dude Robe. Check them out. I'm not even joking. Do it now, and then come back and finish the show. Thanks, guys. What are we doing? At the same time, we've got we've got another slime ball over in the influencer space. Now, you might not know who all three of these people are, but I'm sure you've heard of at least maybe one of them. KSI, Logan Paul, and Mr. Beast have now teamed up to take on Lunchables, okay? They said, hey... There's a void in the kindergarten to second grade lunch space. We need to give these kids a better option. Now, the only thing that they can put inside of a Lunchables competition competitor that kids are actually going to want to eat is the exact same thing that you get inside of a Lunchable. Now, it's, ba- it's the same thing. They've got the mini pizzas. They've got the cold nachos with the cheese and the salsa dip. And they've got the crackers, the cheese, and the little meat squares. Now, according to the Mr. Beast portion of the team, the, uh, the, the ham and the squares, they have less sodium. It's a lot. It Listen, folks, it's still a Lunchable, but it's a lot healthier, okay? It's... It's a lot healthier. Okay, so you should buy your children this for lunch instead. It's the same thing, but a lot healthier because not only on top of the same shit that you get inside of a Lunchable, you get a mini bottle of Prime and you get yourself a mini little Feastables bar. Of course, of course. What are we doing? Of course. We can't get any more original. So we knocked off the entire menu of Lunchables And now we've simply added our own brands in. You get a bottle of Prime and we get a little little fucking candy bar, a little teeny tiny Mr. Beast Feastable bar. What are we doing? And so it's called Lunchly, I think. Lunchly is the product. And man, it's, uh, it's fun. I mean, the website, the website's great. Listen, hey, have fun for lunch. This is it. And they're targeting... The children. This is what we do now. Prime has become a children's brand. Lunchly a children's brand because they know the adults and the millennials who grew up watching them are too smart to buy the Feastables. We're too smart to buy the Logan Paul products, whatever it might be you're slinging. Listen, we tried the Prime. It's sugar water. It's disgusting. What are we doing? And so we've got to target the kids now because having Prime is cool and having Mr. Beast merch is cool, okay? And so what better way than to be the cool kid at lunch with your nachos, with your pizza, with your turkey, cheese, and crackers. But in addition to that, your freaking coolest shit drink and your freaking coolest shit dessert. And you're going to be the talk of the town because your lunch, your parents packed you a freaking prime. What are we doing? Your parents packed you a Mr. Feastable chocolate bar. And it doesn't get better than that they're taking them on and it's us versus them look at the stats they don't lie what are we doing you can't make it up in the food industry you're not allowed to lie about this stuff so parents look at the numbers folks 11 grand okay they both have the same amount of protein all right calories 
a little bit less, but the children need calories. What are we doing? They're growing. Calories don't matter for children, so we're already two columns out. Electrolytes, look how much more salt ours has in it because we're giving you a prime instead of a 100% fruit juice, apple juice. What are we doing? And then the sugar somehow, along with the Mr. Beast chocolate bar, still has three times less the amount of sugar than a Lunchables lunch meal, uh, than the Lunchly. And so you have to get it because your child will not only think that you're the bomb ass parent, they will think that you are um, pretty much the parent of the year. You're probably going to get an award. Like the school's probably going to recognize you in some form of way at the next like all hands on deck parent meeting, like PTO night, you'll probably get a certificate. They'll probably make you president of the PTO and you're going to be responsible for a lot of things. Okay. So be the top of your class. It says it right here. You know what I mean? Be the top of your class. Be, be all about the be, be the cool kid. Okay. Get lunch on lock. Look, listen to this. Listen to the listen to the brand story. Listen to this. They've just made this up. Ready? Lunchly is changing the grab and go game with an innovative approach that prioritizes quality ingredients and delicious flavors. They're the same shit. What are we doing? It's the same shit. And like they're on Twitter. Logan Paul, Mr. Beast, they're on Twitter. Like, oh, well, there's lead in Lunchables, and there's and there's no lead in our shit. Meanwhile. Frigging Logan Paul has like 18 lawsuits happening for, for like forever plastics and whatever else he's getting sued for because prime is like, is it's, it's disgusting. What are we doing? In my opinion, allegedly, I think. Lunchly versus Lunchables. With Lunchly, you get double the amount of liquid. Prime has no sugar added, more electrolytes, and more B vitamins. So we're here to fuel your fun from the lunchroom to the break room by packing every Lunchly trademark, by the way, box with a prime hydration and a feastables chocolate bar crunch bar Whoa. feastables crunch yeah! bar. and it's just jj and logan and jimmy look how happy he is look how happy he what? mr what dawson blow it up look how happy this man is look how happy he is to have to resort to partner with logan paul and ksi to put another shit product in the grocery stores. It's going to be on sale. Listen, folks, there's a reason why Lunchables are 10 for 10 at the grocery store. There's a reason for this. It's disgust. It's, it's, it's poison for your children. What are we doing? We pack my son, among other things, fresh apple slices every day. Why isn't there fresh fruit in the lunch? Lead? What are we doing? Mr. Beast. Why isn't there fresh fruit in the lunch? Lead? My son's lunch has fresh fruit in it every day. What are we doing? And so Mr. Beast and Logan Paul, I'm sorry. He's, he's getting sued. Mr. Beast is getting sued uh, for the Amazon show, like sexual assault allegations, allegedly, dude. I mean, it's not looking good for Beastie Co. anymore. It's the downfall, Okay. And that just brings us to basically the best news uh, of the week. If you thought the Diddy story was crazy, you're not going to fucking believe this. But guess what, dude? We did it. What are we doing? Round of applause for everybody, dude. We did it. We freaking did it. We saved Red Lobster in collaboration with Flavor Flav. He hasn't acknowledged this yet, but we, listen, we single-handedly, this podcast, we've got the clips, the shorts, Red Lobster commented on our TikTok, dude. What are we doing? They see the hustle. They see the grind. They saw the goal. They saw the end. They knew what was to come. If we go right, we close forever. If we go left, we can file for bankruptcy and hopefully with the help of Flavor Flav and Levi, the host of the What Are We Doing podcast, we can save this American brand. What are we doing? And I'm so happy to be the first person to tell you because I don't think you've heard it enough from anyone in your circle that we have single-handedly with your help. We sent out gift cards. We did it all. It was a three-phase initiative. 
and it fucking worked, dude. We saved Red Lobster. What are we doing? We saved him. We saved them. They're out. They have done it. They have crawled out of the bankruptcy depths of hell, and they have officially cleared the slate clean, and we are good to go, dude. Red Lobster is once again a staple of the United States. We will not be losing Red Lobster anytime soon. What are we doing? Get there now to celebrate. Get there now to celebrate because it's just it's 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 a monumental moment if you thought seeing astronauts in elon musk's rocket ship that paid billions of dollars to be in space is crazy in your lifetime this is crazy what are we doing if you thought a billionaire flying other billionaires and presidential candidates to a private island that his female assistant personally escorted underage women to so he could secretly blackmail them in the future and or get funding for whatever he wanted to and do whatever he did on said island with his private jet that we all knew about, that Harvard knew about, that the news knew about, that the president of the United States knew about was crazy in your lifetime? What are we doing? This is crazier. We saved Red Lobster, dude. If you thought P. Diddy, the number one music producer of your time, Friends with Biggie fucking Smalls just got arrested on allegations and all this other crazy sexual freak party shit was crazy. This is crazy. What are we doing? We saved Red Lobster, people. Dear value guests, today is a great day for Red Lobster. We are happy to announce that Red Lobster has successfully exited its Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Red Lobster is now stronger more resilient and ready for a bright new chapter supported by our loyal guests. That's us, our dedicated team members and new U S based ownership who are committed to investing in red lobsters future. You see what happens when we take it back from China? What are we doing? That's what happens. We bring it back to the land of the free, the United States, baby. It's a corrupt system, but we've got nowhere else to go. It's Red Lobster's future and it's in our hands. We've been inspired by countless stories you've shared with us over the past few months of how Red Lobster had been a part of your lives from celebrating milestones, birthdays, and anniversaries to being the place for first dates and turned into a lifelong partnership. That's right. What are we doing? All those first dates that ended in marriage just because of Red Lobster. Listen to this one time. I went on a first date at Red Lobster one time, and the issue was this chick was a little psycho bat. So spoiler alert, she was crazy. This is probably why she picked Red Lobster for the first date location. What are we doing? And so uh, we went. And the issue was she wasn't actually interested in me. And I mean, in this shirt, dude, who could deny me? What are we doing? This bitch was crazy. So obviously she didn't see what was right in front of her. So she didn't actually have any interest in me. What had happened was her crazy ex psycho boyfriend, who was just as fucking loco as she was, uh, just had gotten her pregnant and he had wanted nothing to do with said baby and she was 100% going to keep it but she needed a baby daddy to support her what are we doing so when she saw the clip of uh daddy in this shirt with these four thousand dollar sunglasses on she said ding bingo you know what i mean let's hit him up take him to the red lobster and then boom bam take him back to my place he'll think the baby's his because i'll do him good and then that'll be the end of it so we go to red lobster and we're having a great time she's sucking down what i found out later were virgin strawberry margaritas what are we doing uh because obviously she was pregnant She's sucking down. She told the waitress beforehand. She was there before me. She told the waitress beforehand not to give her alcohol because she was pregnant. I don't know if that part of the story is true because she's crazy. The bitch might have been drinking just to, you know what I mean? What are we doing? So she might have been actually drinking the alcohol. 
it's, 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 I can't really tell at this point in my life. Uh, but so then where she's getting me drunk, she's woozying me up. You know what I mean? We're getting crab legs. We're getting biscuits. We're getting freaking shrimp. We're getting freaking lobster pizzas brought to the table. It's an endless shrimp promotion. What are we doing? At the time. So like we ate a shit ton of shrimp. She was drinking three or four margaritas down in them. I'm thinking it's my lucky night. This chick's You know what I mean? We're going to hang out afterwards. We're going to go back to my place. We're going to have a groovy time. And then as soon as we get out to the parking lot, she vomits freaking strawberry daiquiri all over the parking lot. What are we doing? I kid you not. I swear to God, this chick vomited so much strawberry daiquiri all over the car, the parking lot. I had to take my car to the car wash. I had to get it detailed. The smell didn't come out. My windows were open. Some of it got on my seat. The smell didn't come out of the car until three months later. And so it just, and I was like, bitch, why the fuck? What the fuck? Why are you throwing up? And like, I guess out of rage, she was pissed because her plan had fallen through. Like now I won't fuck her because she's throwing up. And so she was like, bitch, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, fucking shit. I knew you were crazy. What are we doing? But I had a good time at Red Lobster, and so it's it's crazy that we're now here at the next chapter. They continue to say, we're excited to create new cherished moments with you as we turn the page to start writing Red Lobster's next chapter. And that chapter begins right freaking now. You'll start to see the positive impact of investments in Red Lobster across each of our 545 restaurants in the United States and Canada, dude. What are we doing? That's a big number. 500 plus locations. We're more than excited to serve you high quality seafood that has made us a beloved family tradition for over 60, I'm sorry, over 56 years. And to hear how our improvements are making your cherished moments even more special. I mean, that announcement, if that doesn't bring a small tear to your eye, if that doesn't show you how committed we are to Red Lobster, how committed Red Lobster is to you, and how committed we are to that brand. Go to Red Lobster today, tell them who sent you, Levi from the What Are We Doing podcast, and Flavor Flav, don't forget to mention him too, and it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be a grand old time. You're going to get fresh seafood. You're going to get killer service. They're cleaning up the place. They've got money coming in left and right from new investors here in the United States. I heard Elon Musk gave a billion dollars. What are we doing? Like Red Lobster is back, dude. They're back. We did it. They are officially out of chapter 11 bankruptcy. And you know what I mean? It's just, it's a situation where, I don't think anyone was expecting this to happen. We were giving it our entire best and it's, it's just really, it's, I'm, I'm going to start crying here in a minute. I'm, I'm getting choked up because we did <clears throat> everything in our power to save this, uh, this restaurant, this establishment, this organization, and just to see this news happen in such a small amount of time. I mean, how we've only been, it was, the news only came out a few months ago. I mean, We were, I don't, I mean, just, it is so incredible to see the community come together online, in person, in restaurant, to go orders, DoorDash. They said orders are up 300%. What are we doing? It's because of us. It's because of us. It's because of you, the listener, and it's because of the community surrounding those delicious, warm, and moist steamy, cheddary, bay, garlic, cheesy, old, ba- fucking red lobster, unlimited biscuits that fuel the United States economy. And it just, it doesn't, it doesn't get much better. I can't wait. I don't know. Even know Megs knows this news. I get to tell Megs now my son, he's a kindergarten right now. I'm going to tell him as soon as I see him, as soon as I pick him up in a few hours. I mean, this News couldn't have come at a better time. Red Lobster is back, baby, and it's better than freaking ever. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Levi McCurdy. Thank you so much for rocking with me for another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. Uh, Every week, we strive to get better and better and better, and the number of subscribers and support just keeps going up. We've gotten reports in uh, from comments saying things like, we really love the show, keep it up. I just got a DM from another podcaster the other day that says they found and love the show and the clips are awesome, keep it going. 
Uh, so uh, Kodak has finally said we found our wave. So we're riding it, baby. And this is uh, another episode. We're almost at 160. 160 weeks is actually insane. I've got something cooking with a few guests coming soon. Okay, we're going to be promoting a small, uh, probably a small movie, an indie film. We got a sneak peek premiere of it a few months ago. It's ready for release now, so that's coming out. We're probably going to be promoting that with some friends on the couch here soon. Guests coming soon. Uh, we're probably going to be back in Chicago next week. We'll see, unless for whatever reason, business. You know what I mean. I'm constantly business and meeting with lawyers last night was insane. I had a two hour meeting with a lawyer last night. And if you've never had a two hour meeting with a lawyer, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of one of the most exhausting things. And one of the most awakening things, cause you find out a lot about the United States legal system. And it's like, basically it's fucked and it's against all of us. And if you ever get into like, I don't know, something that's not your fault, an act of God, an accident, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like you're not guilty by a thousand miles. You still have to go to court because people were involved and your life will be over and you'll get fired from your job and that'll be it. And that's how the United States justice system works. And so meeting with those lawyers, it's really an eye opener figuring out how some things work. Like he was talking to us about his other cases. I can't say much, okay? It's all a little hush hush, but what we have going on over there is, I mean, just a, an, a, an incredible, incredible amount of work. We can probably talk about it soon. I won't say too much, but it's another insane thing in the wonderful, wonderful world of being a podcast host. When you become a podcast host, all these doors open up. They're like, hey, do you want to do this? Hey, do you want to do this? Hey, do you want to do this? And sometimes you got to go, you got to talk to the lawyers because it's like, hey, what the hell's going on? should I do this? Is this legal? What should I, should I sign this paper? I don't know. And so the lawyers figure it out. They say it's a good idea. Then they won 30%, but that's why we meet with them for two hours to figure every little detail out. What are we doing? And so with that being said, I'll leave you on this. Have a great week, everybody. We can't wait. I think Ellen DeGeneres new Netflix comedy stand-up special is coming out soon. So let's be on the lookout for that. Let's give her zero support uh, for everything that she's done. Uh, and don't definitely watch that when it comes out on Netflix next week. My name is Levi McCurdy. We'll catch you next time. Episode 160 of the What Are We Doing podcast. Peace out, everybody.